All right, Shalom. We're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's the name of the one who the world calls God in the name of the one who the world calls Jesus Christ. Real name, Yahweh Shai. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. All right, we're going to give double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone and honors to all you fellow brothers that are kicking his word and truth and his sincerity and enduring afflictions and uh, casting off Satan. And that's the name of the uh, that's the name of the lesson. The Lord is strengthening us to cast out Satan. OK, yeah, because, um, you know, talking to all the brothers collectively, you know, we're getting hit with uh, high level spiritual attacks. OK, and that's and that's because we're at the end of America. So Satan, this is pretty much Satan's last ga last gasp. OK, uh, when you were uh, earlier in the faith, you may have been uh, dealing with financial problems, family problems, you know, certain things. And, and you just went through it. Like, fuck it, I'm, I'm pushing forth. And then, then it gets, then it gets heavier, okay? Like I was talking to this brother, a, um, a Satan uh, cuts out that uh, intermediary and comes right for you, man. Come right, come uh, right for your neck. But what's happening is the Lord is strengthening our spirits so that we can, um, we can get through it, and then we can do what we can convert our brothers that, um, that are going through it but haven't been uh, built up strong enough to cast off those demons. All right, so I'm going to start with Luke the twenty second chapter. Okay. This is Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you. Right, Satan had desired to have you. So Satan desired Peter, especially Peter. Why? Because he was the rock on, what, on which the, uh, the church was founded. That's what, that's what, his, and that's what his name means. It means rock. Okay, because his, his, his uh, given name is uh, Simeon. So Satan wanted, uh, wanted Peter more than anybody. Go ahead, bro. That he may shift you as wheat. That he may sift you as wheat. And you look up that word, it's steniazo, which means to overthrow by inward agitation. And that's and that's what Satan does. Because at this point, us brothers, we uh we know this doctrine is true. So the only thing that Satan can do, just like the only thing that Satan could do to Peter, was to irritate him, was to have some spirits messing with him, to, to try to have them doubt the Lord, just like when he was walking on water. And what happened? He started to think about it. He started thinking too much, and he started to doubt. And that's what Satan wants to do to all of us. He wants us to doubt if we're the men of the Lord or not, which we, we have to be the men of the Lord. But that's the goal of Satan, right, to, to get to, to mess with you, okay, so that he may sift you, then, then to overcome you. Go ahead, brother. But I have prayed for thee. But I have prayed for thee. And that's the most important thing to know, that the, the second in command of the universe is actually praying for us. And he's praying and he's praying on behalf of his father, meaning he's we're praying, he's praying for us, and he's praying so that the Heavenly Father will accept us. And because you're only accepted back to the Heavenly Father through the Son. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you ask him brothers to pray for you, is to know that uh, above all, you got Yahweh Shad praying for you, man. Just like he was praying for, just like he prayed for Peter. Why? Because we're 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 in that same chain of command, okay? Because we we obey, you obey Yahweh, you're going to obey Yahweh Shai, you're going to obey, obey Peter. We obey uh, what our apostles and our elders say. So we fall in that line, that line of the, the men that our, our power, our powers are praying, are praying for. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, this is John 17 and 9. You I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray for them. That them is talking about us, man. Okay, because it was talking about the disciples and, and then those that came after disciples because it, it didn't stay just the disciples. And then really it, there were 70 when you read in the Gospels and then it grew. Okay, after our Lord uh, died and was resurrected. Okay, what happened? More souls were added unto the church after different, um, different miracles, different judgments. Like when Ananias and Sapphira, when they got uh, put to death, souls were added unto the church. Okay, well, when, uh, with, with, uh, with Paul. When they would just, uh, when they would just touch his handkerchief, yeah. what happened? Souls were added unto the church. See, so we're those, we're those men that are that, that that the Lord is praying for, man. And He's not praying for the world, meaning all of Israel. Come on, bro. For them which Thou hast given me, for they are Thine. Yeah, for they are Thine, meaning we be, we're, we're, we belong to Yahweh. We we're given to Yahweh Shai by Yahweh. So that's why the prayers are being heard. And that's why when you pray, when you're going through things, that's why your prayers are heard. That's why when you, you're getting afflicted, you got you feel heaviness in your soul, you pray, and what happens? It, it, the Heavenly Father 
uh, through a son and the angels, they take those those spirits off you. And then and then you're cool. And then you do what? And it's all for what? For you to preach this gospel. Because you're being used as a vehicle, as a vessel for this word. So it can have free course. So that it can be dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth. Because the prophecy is what? Then shall the end come. You got something else, bro? Uh, no, I'm going to go back. Go back to Luke. Yeah. Yep. So this is uh, Luke 22 and 30, 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Because what, what it really comes down to is if you believe in Yahweh or not. If you believe, you'll be saved. If you don't, you'll be damned. So this the, the, the counsel of Satan, or Satan's purpose is to throw you off of that course to make you turn into an unbeliever. So then you'll be condemned. That's why the scriptures say what? He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Come on. Yep. It says, and he said unto him, Lord, it's like it. No, uh, it's like no, it. you gotta read that right now. For thy faith fail not, but I, oh, let me start over 32. God. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Meaning when you get through that hurdle, you strengthen your brothers. You may you may just uh, hit a brother up and give a testimony about about uh, your endurance, you know how you how you overcame the spiritual demon Satan, uh, a, a spirit that was messing with you or was trying to get on you, and how you by praying, by fasting, whatever you know, talking to the heavenly Father, uh, making supplication, how that spirit left you, man, and then that does what? That strengthens a brother's resolve, man, and that's what it's all about, strengthening you because it's gonna get it's gonna intensify. Right now, it's all spiritual. Pretty soon, we're going to have uh, a flood of troops coming at us. And you're going to have to trust in the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah and know that you, by you expressing those names, that you'll be delivered from that situation. Excuse me, that you'll be delivered from that situation. You got something, bro? Yeah, I want to go back to John 17. Real quick. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, this is, this is John 17. And um, I'll start at 14. I have given them thy word, and the world has, uh, has hated them because they are not of the world. Even, Read that again, brother. Yeah, um, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. Yeah, and the world has hated them. Yeah, this world hates us, which is why the, the purpose of this world is to get you to become a, a hater like they are, man. To take, to, to strip that word from you. But it's impossible. Once you have this word, once it's, once it's in your mind, it's impossible. Like, uh, like, uh, like, hey, like Yahweh Shai said in um, St. Like John the 10th chapter, none can pluck them out. See? Go ahead. It says, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Yeah, so our Yahweh Shah wasn't of the world. That's why the world hated him. And we're the same way. And that's why people come at us and they're so vehement in their in their disdain for us. Why? Because we're not of the world. We don't we don't fit in with these people. And it's why? Because we have the we have the doctrine of Yahweh Shah and we have his the, his name and his father's name, which is contrary to this world. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, mm. but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Yeah, and that's a, that's a very important um, thing to meditate on because Paul was going through that. He said uh, he said to die is gain, and but it, but he realized that it was more profitable to stay in his flesh and preach the word because that's the only reason that we're living. Or we're not living to uh, fulfill the works of the flesh. We're living so that we can push this word out. Okay, so that the elect can be sealed. That's it, man. And that's why he pray, he's not praying that we should be uh, taken back to the spirit world. He wants us down here to fulfill his will because we're his servants, man. And that's it. That's your that's your goal. That's your that's your life purpose. You got some more? Yeah, I'm going to keep uh, two more verses. Yep. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Yep, go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right, make them holy, clean through the truth. And this word is truth. So this is what cleans you. This is what makes you holy. And really, this word is what separates us from the rest of the people in the world, from the rest of our nation, the nation of Israel. Because like the brother was saying, is as if we're a different nation. Uh, you know, I know the, the brother was giving a testimony how he was eating, and then some jakes came in. He was like, man, it was like, it's a different nation. The whole spirit that they had on is Because this world, this world, this world makes you wicked, but this word makes you righteous. It cleanses you. And the affliction that comes with this word, because with you, with you receiving this word, you receive this word in affliction. 
that's a that's a part of it. That's the catch. You're not going. You're not going to receive it, and then uh, all these great worldly things are going to happen to you. No, you're you're gonna you're gonna lose all your material things, and then at times it's going to seem as if you're on the verge of losing your mind. And which that's what we're uh, through the spirit we're focusing on with the lesson, how the Lord is strengthening us to cast out Satan. You got something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is uh First Peter five and eight. Be sober, be vigilant. Yeah, be and sober means uh sober minded. I'm um uh, solemn. Wait, sit, read that again. Uh, be sober. Right. So I'm sorry. Sober means solemn or serious. So serious minded. Come on. Be vigilant. Be vigil. Be vigilant. Matter of fact, let me look up that word. Let me look up that word. Uh, vigilant. But you, but you keep re reading, bro. Go on. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a warring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Right. The, seeking whom he, he, whom he may devour. And that's going to that's gonna happen if you don't have your guard up. I looked up that word vigilant. And it means watchful, anxious, woo, careful. Yeah. That's why brothers have uh, high anxiety. They're always anxious. If a brother go, this brother goes into uh, your system and what is what is it? The cortisol. cortisol. The cortisol. But that's why, because you have to be. Because at any moment, the spiritual demon Satan can overtake you. That's why you have to be continually on your watch. You have to search out what's evil for you, as the scriptures say. You gotta watch out the evil people around you. And you, you have to make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. Hey, because you, you walk about as a roaring, as a roaring lion. A roaring lion is vicious. It's, it's, that's a fearful thing, man. And, and uh, hey, and the lion's gonna get somebody, man. It's right? Yeah, when, right. When a lion goes out, it, it it always gets its prey, man. You have to make sure that it's not you, that you don't get devoured. But if you're the elect, that's, that's not gonna happen anyways, man. Yeah. But you have to always, you have to always be on on guard, man, because Satan is always coming at you, and you feel it too, man. You can feel it in your bones. You know, you could you could feel like, damn, like something's about to happen. And then, bam, that happens. Really, um, the fight, you got the fiery darts. Matter of fact, if you can get that in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Which really, that's those, that's those thoughts, man. Those, those fiery darts. The, the Satan whispering in your ear, just like he did to our Lord, man. He was just, whisper, he was just whispering. You can have this. You can have this. You can have this. Okay, putting, uh, putting um, thoughts, visuals in your mind. But that's why you take the whole armor, because then you understand, oh, that's that's a satanic thought. Which that's what separates us uh, from these people who are reprobates, which means what? Void of judgment. That's what separates us from being animals, man. The the the, the cognitive function of knowing uh, right from wrong. You got it, bro? Yeah, you want me to go straight to... Um... Start at 10. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah. This is Ephesians 6 and 10. Put on the whole armor of the most high that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Which that, when you look up wiles, it means pretty much the craftiness. You know, because Satan is, Satan is crafty. Go ahead, bro. Go on. It says... Yeah, and, uh, and wile means to deceive, to trick. They like, they like even our people in the world, where they say the devil is a lie, that nigga Rick Ross, or the devil is a lie, which is true. Because, the, hey, what did the scripture say? Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. You know, so people are, are people that come into this truth, you know, those that we thought were brothers, they got, they got tricked. Okay, they got tricked by Satan. And now, then now they're out the truth. All right, Satan gave them a vision. We might have gave them a dream. We might have been drunk. They got a vision. You know, took some herbs, and then Satan, Satan tricked him. Then that, that seed was planted, then it grew, and then they're out the truth. But that's how Satan works, man. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. It says, put on the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Put on the whole armor of the Heavenly Father, meaning this, this whole row, front to back, man. Old and New Testament, including the Apocrypha. All these scriptures should be popping up in your mind continually. And, and, and sometimes it gets heavy because you'd be like, damn, you know, that's all I can think about. But you have to have that. Otherwise, you, you really, that's a, that's a beautiful thing to have that spirit, you know. Because sometimes you want to just chill. You want to have a, a clear mind. You want to relax. 
but but it's it's better this than something some some uh some wicked spirit creep in and then dwell there. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This isn't a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. There's actual there's actual spirits from the um from another realm that are controlling what's happening here on earth. And even the spiritual demon Satan, it, it's all it's all a uh, it's all a test from the heavenly Father. And you can read about that in the book of Job. Okay, because Job, uh, because uh, Satan was commissioned by the Heavenly Father to see if to see where Job's loyalty, uh, loyalty uh, was, man. How how strong his integrity was. Was he gonna fold when he was uh, attacked by Satan, or was he gonna be strengthened and overcome? Come on, bro. But against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, against powers. Yeah, so we're fighting against powers from another realm, man. <laughs> this ain't no this ain't it ain't like we fighting against the white man which he's our he's our enemy and and he's um and it appears that way to our people because he's dealing directly with the spiritual demon satan now we're fighting against we're fighting against satan man on orders from the heavenly father that's why it says you have to fight the good fight of faith which that's why you always have some obstacle There's, that's why you always have a battle because if not the the scripture wouldn't be uh the scriptures wouldn't be written that ha it has to be fulfilled that you fight. It can't be no, it can't be no smooth ride, man. And that's why once you get through those material things, okay, losing your job, losing your woman, so on and so forth, that's when that's when it gets it gets intensified, man. Why? Because okay, you pass that, you pass that. What about this? What, what about how are you gonna handle these thoughts, man? Reset. Yeah. This is uh first Timothy six and twelve. Beautiful. Fight the good fight of faith. Right. Fight the good fight of faith. It's what it's about. It's seeing if your faith fails not. But it's not gonna fail because Yahweh is praying for you that your, your faith doesn't uh fail. But in the midst of that, you're gonna take your lumps, your bruises. And in the fight, sometimes you get knocked down. Right? You get hit, but you get back up. Come on. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life, because that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for eternal life. We're fighting for the kingdom, man. We're fighting for our nation. We're fighting for our, uh, our spirit to flourish, finally. Because in, in America, your, your spirit can't flourish. You can't be just relaxed. You always got you always got to be on guard. Why? Because you have to fight against the wiles of the devil, which is why some, you're anxious, you're nervous. Sometimes, bros, you're uptight. But that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting to not have to go through that, because in the kingdom, it's going to be full relaxation. We have to we have to fight and we have to batter and we have, um, battle and we have to labor to enter into rest. I'll tell you that in Hebrews the fourth chapter. Come on, bro. It says, "Whereunto thou art also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses." Right, profess a good profession. This is our profession. All right, we have, and the main the main things that we're professing are the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Okay, and then we're professing the prophecies. Because that's what that's pretty much what it means. Anyways, we're prophesying because and you have to speak about all these things because the, the Lord can't reign and you can't be delivered unless this place is destroyed. This place, which is uh, known as the daughter of Babylon, Assyria, Nineveh, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, so on and so forth, man. So and that's why our Lord said what? I pray not that thou shouldest uh, take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. Yet evil is going to try you. Evil, evil, uh, evil people, evil spirits, evil thoughts, and it's your job as a fighter, all right, to to overcome them. Okay, you got something, bro? I'm gonna go back into uh, Ephesians. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, but sure. And and uh, and Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, uh, Barakatham, you know, to all your brothers. So, so long, my kid. Yeah. Come on. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So we we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against rulers of the darkness, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Right, against the rulers of darkness, man, of this world. The rulers of darkness, which what are the, what are the works of darkness? Idolatry, sodomy, adultery, all right, emulation, uh, uh, envy, wrath. That's, that's, that's what we're fighting against. And that's what uh, the spiritual demon Satan wants you to become. Want you to uh, to be enveloped, to be consumed by that spirit, man. Which is why you have to continually fight, man. Because these people, they ain't got no type of uh, 
uh, love in their heart. They talk about love. That's like the main spirit that they push out. Oh, it's all about love. But they have no type of love in their heart, man. And, and their job is to, and Satan's job is to get on these people or to come to you directly to turn you into that, man. Get you to look at uh, look at your brother a certain type of way, okay? To get you to uh, look at the most high and his son a certain type of way. Pretty much to deny the Lord, man. Come on. Yep. It says, <clears throat> Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against spiritual wickedness in high places, man. And you and you have these elites. That's why they put all these spirits out here to, to frustrate you and to get you to um and to get you to give up, man. Oh man, well, man. there's no hope. And that's what uh, the majority of our people they've fallen into, which is why they conform to the society, just like in the time of Maccabees, man. It says many also of the Israelites consented unto this religion, which is what? The New World Order back then. Because Antiochus Epiphany said what? He, he wrote that all should become one people. And so all the heathen agreed and also a lot of the Israelites. Our, we weren't circumcising ourselves. We became, our souls became abominable. And we're not going to let that happen, man. Us brothers in this faith, Lord's will, we're going to keep enduring. Okay, and be in that light that shineth in darkness, man. And that comes by what? Putting on that whole armor. You keep going, bro? Yes. Yeah. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High. Right. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, because this is all this is all a, a prelude to the the hour of temptation, which is when you're going to be presented with that RFID chip to face death. Which we believe through the Spirit that the Lord is going to give us spiritual power to fight through that. Man, we're going to call on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and and a he he could just bug out the uh he could bug out the guards, man. He could bug out the police officers. Have them start killing themselves, put a fearful spirit on them. The Lord, hey, the Lord does some, some some marvelous things when you read the scriptures. And then also in our in our day to day, man, we, we see it, man. We see how the Lord does some just marvelous works to deliver you out of situations, man. And he's going and, he, and it's all leading up to that that spectacular deliverance, which is when the missiles hit. And then simultaneously, the elect get taken up, man. And we behold all you people getting burnt up. And we have faith that the Lord can do that, man. We know he can, yet we call it faith. Why? Because it's all predicated on faith. We haven't actually seen it. You know, we we you know we don't have a like the Lord didn't tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, whisper in her, hey, hey, you're the elect. No, no but we we have faith, man. We we believe that we are those men. You got something, bro? Uh, no, no, um, yeah, yeah. I'm keep, gonna, keep going on I'm Ephesians. What we show? It says, "Wherefore, <clears throat> take on the whole armor of the Most High, that you may build." Be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And having done all to stand, meaning you've done everything that you can do to, to make yourself ready for the battle. Go ahead. Yep. It says, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked yeah all the fiery thought uh darts of the wicked which that's talking about those those uh those thoughts and spirits that uh that uh that mess with you man read that again bro yep it says <clears throat> above all taking the shield of faith the shield of faith that's what it's about the shield of faith that what you that you can overcome it so you have to believe that you can overcome this world that you can overcome these spirits Come on. Uh, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Right, quench. You, you can quench it. You can quench the, the spirit of Satan, man. All those darts. All right, you can, you can, uh, you know, you can have the shield of faith so that it doesn't penetrate you. So that it doesn't, it doesn't dwell there and start uh, affecting the way that you act, man. Okay, affect, uh, affecting your actions. Because that's when that's when you're done, man. Because that's when you become a reprobate, when you give in to Satan, when you give heed to those seducing spirits. When you look up the word seduce, it means to lead away from one's purpose, man, <laughs> which we, we know what our purpose is, to uh, fear the Heavenly Father and keep his commandments. Fear the Heavenly Father and his Son and keep his commandments. Do the work of an evangelist. Uh, minister unto the saints. You got some more, bro? Yep, some more. It says, and take the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Most High. Ooh, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Most High. That's how you fight. You can read about that in uh, Luke the fourth chapter. When Satan, when Satan was hitting, uh, hitting the Lord, what did he do? He hit him with scripts. And that's why you got these, these scriptures in your mind all the time. Because when them darts come, you know, okay, man, nope, nope, that's that's right or that's wrong. Okay, you you know what to agree with and what to disagree with. Once you lose that, that makes you a reprobate. Got some more? Yes, yeah, a little bit more here. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Right, all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. That's why you know we pray for the brothers. You, know, you pray, hey, I pray. You know, like we we pray that this this comforts your soul and it gives you more you know more spirit you know to fight the fiery darts of the wicked, man. You got some more, bro? Oh, that was it on that. You had uh, you wanted to look eight? Yeah, uh, Mark eight. It's like it, Mark. Mark 8 and uh, start at 32. This is Mark 8 and 32. And he, and he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Yeah, and when you read up, and you read up pretty much, the, the Lord told the disciples what was going to befall him, or how he had to be betrayed and given over to the Gentiles. And uh, and persecuted and and um, and um, put on the cross. He had to be crucified. All right, go ahead. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, "Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest thou uh, savorest not the things that be of the Most High, but the things that be of men." Yeah. So he he called Peter Satan, man. So you so you gonna have Satan uh, on you, and then at certain times, you know, the more you grow in the faith, you realize, like, damn, I got it. this is a demon on me, and so you may not you may not even know, but what's gonna happen? The Lord is gonna chastise you. The Lord is gonna have you get rebuked. Like sometimes you get rebuked for things, and you didn't, you know, you didn't even do it. But that's just because there's Satan on you, man, and the Lord is trying to get that off of you. That's why you get. That's why we get chastised. Okay, why? Because we need to be uh, re rebuked of Satan. Because the more you're there, yeah, the more you're in this, the more it's revealed. That, damn, man, I, I got some demons on. There's some things that I do that I, I'm not supposed to be doing. Man. And Peter didn't. Peter, he was sincere. He wasn't. He wasn't trying to. Um, he wasn't trying to be evil or wicked or nothing like that. But it's because he wasn't savoring the things of the uh, of the Most High. He was savoring it for him because he wanted the the Lord to abide with him still. He didn't want to see his his uh his master go through that, his friend. But that was the will of the Heavenly Father, man. Now, can you go to uh, the next chapter? And uh, just go to 25. This is Mark 9 and 25. When Yahushai saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Yeah, so certain things that you do, it's because you have a spirit on you to do it, man. And that's why, and that's why you get rebuked and something will happen, and then what happens, that spirit will hop off, man. You rebuke yourself, you pray, and that spirit will hop off. That's why rebuke is so important. That's what our Lord was doing, man. He was rebuking demons uh, off of our people, man. You know, a lot of people they don't want to get rebuked. If you don't, if you're not open for rebuke, guess what, man? You're not going to be strengthened to to um, fight Satan, man. Satan is going to dwell in you, man. And then eventually you're gonna get uh you're gonna get uh overthrown, man. Come on. It says. <coughs> it says, and the spirit cried and rent him him sore, and came out of him. Yeah, and and that happens with bros. You actually feel it. You'll pray and you'll you'll be stressed out. You'll feel something in your body and then it leaves, man. Why? Wow, that's that spirit. Come on. And he was as one dead, in so much that many said he is dead. Yeah, because that that demon was so was so heavy on him, man. It took pretty much it took all the energy out of him. Come on. 
But Yahweh took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? Yeah, because that was a real that was a real heavy demon, man. That wasn't no no regular because when you read up pretty much, he had uh, epilepsy when, when you read up because he he had he was having seizures. Yeah, like when you read the uh the 18th verse, it describes uh those that have seizures. Which a seizure is really uh like like a, a robbery. What did they say? We, they went they seized my home. So pretty much a seizure, they call it a seizure, that's when the, the spiritual demon of Satan has seized your mind. And then what happens, you can't control things and then you, know, you fall to the ground and you know, you're foaming at the mouth and so, and so on and so forth, okay? And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to see, Satan's trying to seize your mind and to get you to do things that aren't convenient for you, man. Go ahead. And he said unto them, this time can come forth by nothing but by the prayer and fasting by prayer and fasting and that's that's how you can get demons off of you by prayer and fasting and you pray continuously you pray and you pray and you pray guess what the, the spirits that's messing with you they'll, they'll come up off of you man you might have to have a, a, a brothers pray uh pray over you get the anointing oil which we asked uh Baniya, baby you through to do that because we could tell he was going through things he was going through things but he didn't want that man why because he felt comfortable with those demons uh, dwelling in them, man. You got something? Yeah, precept. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Pray without ceasing. There you go. Pray without ceasing. You have, you have to continually pray because there's always uh, there's always spirits that's looking to get on you, man. Or spirits that's, or spirits that's, uh, that's in you that you need to get off of you. So you got to pray continually. And even when we do these lessons, man, you know, you try a uh, chick would pop up in your mind. Anything, man. Some wild, some wild stuff. Hey, yeah, because you know we go out there on the highways and hedges and we do these lessons. And some, uh, some bros who who are just listening, you think, oh, you think, oh, this is cool. Yeah, we gonna go out, curse out the white man. Nah, this is, this is, it's way, it's way deeper than this, man. You're actually Satan. Satan really want to come at you then. Why? Because you're doing the work. You could be feeling cool, and then as soon as the, as soon as you start reading, man, Satan, Satan come, man. That happens all the time, man. <laughs> that happens all the time. Why? Because Satan means what? Adversary. Adversary of what? The word of the Heavenly Father, man. So Satan really don't want his word to come out. But that's why you got you to gotta continue to fight, man. Yeah, you got to push through it, man. Okay? Yeah, I pray. Hey, y'all bashing me out shot. Hey, give me the spirit to uh, continue in this lesson. All right? To continue to edify and, and then it'd, it'd be and it'd be edifying. A brother hit you up, and that was spiritual. And he was going through all types of hell just to get this word out, man. That's how serious this. That's how serious this fight is, man. This ain't this ain't no walk in the park. But that's why Lord's will. We gonna get that crown because he says, "What? These are the men that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, man. Through through all adversity, stood stiffly, still proclaimed the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. That's that's what it's about. All right, you got some more? Yeah, this is uh, this is. Second Corinthians two and eleven. Yep. Least Satan should get an advantage of us. Yep. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Right. For we are not ignorant of his devices, which his main his main device is to uh, separate the brotherhood. When you read up, that's what it's talking about. You know, separate separate brothers. Okay. Uh, separate you from the love of the heavenly Father. Lest Satan should. We're not ignorant of his devices, which ignorant means not to know. Meaning we know his devices. Okay, he wants to hop on a brother, you know, go against another brother or, or hop on a brother to pervert the doctrine so that then he'll fall into condemnation or bring others with him. You know, uh, make you a, a person of the world. That's that's the devices of Satan. And you have to know that. So you have to know that. So because just just because hey, just because uh, Satan comes at you don't mean you got to let him in because Satan's going to come. Matter of fact, give me uh, Matthews, the seventh chapter out. Uh, where you want to start it up? Um, let's go to uh, 18. So, this is Matthew, Matthew 7 and 18. And we're on Pilot Market, in case you don't get it. We're on Pilot Market. We're out there every Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the brother from uh, 
your brother from Reading. Yeah, I tried to uh, text you, but I guess it was a landline. So yeah, we're on a uh, Lord's Wall call. You were on Pilot Market um, every Saturday. We'll be out there around four. Yeah, this is uh, this is Matthew seven and twenty one. Not everyone. I mean, so like you went to eighteen. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth, bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewed down and cast into the fire. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Yeah, by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay, the, by uh, the fruit of your spirit. Okay, like how you are, what what doctrine you're uh, you're preaching, how you conduct yourself. Go ahead. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, yeah, Lord, Lord. Yeah, just because uh, you call out for the Lord don't mean you're going to enter into the kingdom. Yeah, because you got people who fell out. The Lord ain't going to hear them, man. Why? Because they stopped doing the work. They'll still call on the name. They'll know the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, but they didn't continue in the ministry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It says... Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Yeah, have we not have we not prophesied in, in your name? I used to do the work. Yeah, I, I used to be an Israelite. Go ahead. And in thy name have cast out devils. Oh, yeah, we cast out. Hey, oh, I was out there. Yeah, we cast out a demon. Like Janet came up. Because you had there's a real spiritual moment when this this demon came up and the spirit hopped on us to cast uh cast uh, out the demon in her name. She was bugging out and then, you know, put a curse on her and then she was cool. She said, I'm cool, saluted us and then left. <laughs> but they saw that and they, but they fell out, man. So they'll say, look, we casted out de demons in your name. And but, in thy name done many wonderful works. Yeah, and thy name did many wonderful works, which that, that's a wonderful work. But what happened? You stopped doing it. Okay, yeah, go ahead, brother. And when will I prop and then will I prophesy unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that ye that work iniquity, iniquity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Depart from me. All right, ye that walk in iniquity. I never knew you, man. Why? Because you were never if you don't endure until the end, you're not really a you're not really a prophet. You're never a servant. You say, Well, you I'll you I'll know you're my servants indeed. You'll you you are my servants indeed if you continue. That's what it's all about. And you have to continue through what? Fighting Satan, man. Because that's the opposition. The spiritual demon Satan is in opposition to you, man. And he's, set, and he's set up from the Heavenly Father to be in opposition to you, man. That's what you got to, and that's what you got to realize, man. That the Lord hasn't forsaken you just because you have spirits messing with you, man. That is that's actually the goal of Satan, man. To, to overthrow you, man. And it's really to, to, well, it's to test you. But if you're not of the elect, what's going to happen? You're going to be overthrown, man. You got something, bro? Yeah, that was, that was it. Dude. That was it? Okay. Well, yeah, well, see, that's that's pretty much it. You know, point made. But hopefully it's edifying. You know, the brethren reading, I got your, um, I got your info. Like I said, I tried um, texting you, but I'm going to call you. I guess you got the landline, so I'll give you a call. So we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Baha Raka Kodash, Barakatam, you know, to all you brothers and you, um, you few sisters, you believers. And um, hey, and death to America and keep fighting, all right, because uh, hey, the fight is almost over, man. That's right. And America ain't got too much longer. And we can say that confidently through the spirit and measuring the time. So, again, hopefully it was edifying and, um, and keep pushing. Shalom. Shalom.